Welcome to another video from Robotic Mower Services. Today we are going to show you the location of the major components inside the lower chassis of a 400-500 series auto mower, non-all-wheel drive. And what we have here is a 450XH. If you take apart a 450X or a 550 or a 550H, you're going to find the same stuff. Unless you have an older version of the 550 or the 450X, then you would have the blue wrap batteries rather than the uh, black hard cased batteries. If you have a 430X or a 430XH, then you would have the black battery, one battery, in the newer style, but the older style would have the blue wrap style battery, and you would only have the one battery back here. The 430X, 430XH do not have this board in them, which is your ultrasonic sensor board. This, obviously, goes to the sensors on the top cover of the 450X, 450XH, 550, 550H, and you have the wires that come out here. There's two plugs that come out, and they connect to the, uh, the plugs that come down from the top cover for them sensors. And so, in the 400 series, or um, 430X, 430XH, you won't find that board. You won't have this wiring harness. It's just a plug in there. Uh, when I say plug, I don't mean an electrical plug. I mean a rubber plug in there to keep the, uh, the water and everything out. And you won't have the ribbon cable in there that goes from the ultrasonic sensor board back to your main board. Now, one thing that gives people a lot of headaches is when they take one of these apart, say they're swapping out a main board, and they didn't take pictures or anything, they don't have any notes on where everything goes, and they go to hook this ultrasonic sensor board back up. And they go to plug it in right here, and they say, no, that can't be right. Why would they plug that in right over top of the plug for the headlights and put that ribbon cable on such a hard bend like that? Well, if you're thinking that way, that is where it goes, and that's the way to remember it. The one place where it looks like it should not go is where it goes. No idea why you have four auxiliary ports here and they pick the one right over top of another plug. So that's a good way to remember where it goes. If you don't think it should go there, that's it. Now, obviously, as I mentioned, you have the plug underneath here for your headlights. Uh, the newer style 430Xs will have that. The older style 430Xs will not have headlights. So they do not have that wire in here. But this runs from the main board all the way out to the front, down through a grommet, um, or plugs into the, the wire coming through the grommet and goes to your top cover. So that's a little red and, and blue wires there, the thin ones that run through there. Uh, you have the blue wires right here. This is the one that goes to your charging plates and the nose of the mower. And that just runs straight back from the front all the way to right in between the uh, battery connections on the main board for your 450X, 450XH, 550, 550H. And as we said earlier on the 430 or 430 variants, you would, um, you would only have the one battery. So you would have the battery connected on this side. And then your blue wire would still plug in here at the same spot. The, uh, the 430X, 430XH, 450X, 450XH, the 500 series automowers, uh, you know, the 520, 520H, 550, 550H, they all use the same main board. It's just, it depends on the serial number of the mower that lets it determine what model it is and um, what components it can use in here. So if you open up a uh, 430X and you say, I only got one battery in there and there's a spot over here for a second battery, and there's a plug for a second battery, I'm going to plug in a second battery. That main board in your mower will not recognize that battery because it knows it's not supposed to. So, you get a lot of people asking about that. Not even worth your time to try it because you can plug it in there, it's not going to do anything for you. So keep that in mind. Another thing with the batteries, if you have the black hard case batteries, these cables that run between the main board and the battery do not come with the battery. On the old blue style batteries, the wires were part of the battery and came with the battery. On these, they do not. So if you would need them for any reason, you got to make sure to order those separately. Uh, main board, we'll talk about a little bit more while we're here at it. This has the, um, 
the port for the USB cable for the dealers to plug into mounted right onto it. On either side in the bottom corner, there are two black boxes. Those are the rear loop sensors. They work with the front loop sensors. So when the mower is coming through a uh, narrow corridor and all of a sudden these sensors back here, as it goes through, they sense that the wires are getting further and further apart. They know then to tell the mower, hey, we're in wide open area now. We can just go and run, you know, wherever we want to go to. We don't have to stick to that tight little spot. So they're located on the main board. Your uh, tilt sensor, you have tilt sensor issues. That's located on the main board. You have your wheel motors. There's a plug here and a plug over here. That's for your wheel motors. Same wheel motors used in the 430X, 430XH that are used in the 450 and uh, 550 mowers. So uh, no changes there in that. Um, what's next? We have a plug here. This is the one that goes out to our cutting motor. The cutting mo motor is in this assembly here because this is what raises and lowers the cutting assembly. This electric motor right here changes the height to cut and it drives a gear which uh, turns a screw mechanism in here that raises and lowers all this up and down. The wires from this motor go over here and they plug in to the cutting height adjustment board. And you also see these yellow wires here. These are the ones that go back to the main board. So they, you know, when you change something, the, uh, the main board sends the signal through these wires to that board, which then, you know, senses what's going on here by that screw mechanism inside this housing and then sends the message to the cutting height motor here. When you go to, if you go to take this apart, if you go to take this out to see why your cutting height adjustment is jammed or, uh, you know, you're taking it apart for any other reason, before you take any of this stuff out here, any of this black plastic stuff out of here, this screw right here in this tab holds that cutting height adjustment board in place. Take that screw out, take that little clamp off of there, and slide that board out. If not, if you go and you just undo all this stuff and you try to pull this up out of there, you're going to end up ripping the sensors, more than likely, you're going to end up ripping the sensors off of this board. It's very easy to do if you don't know what you're doing, and that's the way you got to do it. You have to take this board and slide it directly out before you take any of this apart. When you go to put it together, you put all this stuff back in here, you fasten it down, and then you slide that board in. Then you fasten that board down. Once you take this apart, once you slide that board out of there, you're going to see exactly what I'm talking about. And it's all going to make sense to you. And you'll be glad that I told you that little trick there um, before you go ruining that circuit board and have to replace a new one for no reason other than you just didn't know ahead of time what you're going to run into. So moving forward here, front loop sensor. That's this board right up here. The difference that you'll see uh, with the variants of the 4 and 500 series are the high cut mowers use the one clamp and one screw where the um, low cut models have a second post and they use uh, a second screw and clamp to hold that board into place. Um, what else do we got here? Uh, we have the uh, front axles on the high cuts. They sit down in. So really the only way to get these out, or I shouldn't say the only way, the best way and the easiest way is prop the chassis up and just tap on that right, right on the top of that shaft with a punch and just drive that axle down through that retaining clip. And when you go to put it in, you're going to need to get something around that retaining clip to push it down on there. On the low cut models, that's sitting up here pretty much flush. You can pry that off with a screwdriver or however you need to go about it, but you you have a little bit more leeway because you can get to it easier. Now, if your front wheel assembly falls out of your mower and you try to push it back up in there, it'll push back up in, but you're going to have to take it down this far here to be able to put a new retainer on there to hold it into place. And that's something we hear people talking about quite a bit. Uh, your rope seal, we showed you a video on how to install that the proper way, but that goes around here. You always want to replace that anytime you have the mower this far open to keep any kind of moisture and dust and dirt out of there as best as possible. So hopefully this helps any of you guys out that are looking to do some repairs on your own of your auto mower if you're out of warranty or uh, whatever reason. At least now you know what some of these components look like and where they're located. 
So if you're looking for parts for your auto mower, be sure to check out www.roboticmowerservices.com. Go there. We got a lot of parts already listed on there. If you don't find what you're looking for, then send us an email and we'll get you hooked up. There's even a link right on there at, on our parts um, department page where it says at the bottom, hey, if you're not seeing what you're looking for here, you know, shoot us an email and we'll get you taken care of. Um, also, if, uh, if you have any other questions or uh, need some more, a little bit more technical assistance on your auto mower, don't hesitate to send us an email at roboticmowerservices at gmail.com and uh, we'll do the best we can to try to help you out. So that's going to do it for this video. Make sure to subscribe to this channel, Robotic Mower Services YouTube channel, and uh, check out our website because we've always got new stuff we're adding on, on to it. And we're always adding new videos to this channel. So uh, we appreciate all the support, and we thank you for watching.